Hi. <coughs> Excuse me. We're on page 63 of the NIV. I know all these past ones have said page 63, and I'm sorry for that confusion. I got these pages mixed up with the other pages that we were doing, and there's just been a confusion. So I know it says 63, 63, 63, but that's why it says 63A, B, C is because I got the pages mixed up and I still wanted them to be in order. We really are on page 63 now. <coughs> All right, we've been talking about Moses uh, and the Israelites out in the desert of Sinai and the Ten Commandments being given to Moses from the Lord. And Moses had fasted and been up on the mountain for 40 days and 40 nights. Okay, so that's where we are. The Lord said to Moses, tell the Israelites to bring me an offering. You are to receive the offering for me from everyone with hearts, whose hearts prompt them to give. <clears throat> then have them make a sanctuary for me and I will dwell among them. Make this tabernacle, tabernacle meaning is a, a portable structure, meaning we can carry it along. It's also called the tent of meeting in which this is where the presence of God dwelled with his people. A permanent temple would then replace the tabernacle later under King Solomon. Okay, so he said, make this tabernacle, also called what he just called the sanctuary, and all its furnishings exactly like the pattern I will show you. Along with giving Moses the Ten Commandments and other laws, God instructed him as to how to organize worship for the Israelites. From that time on, God's presence would reside in the tabernacle, which was a portable tent of worship. Inside the tabernacle sat the lavishly designed Ark of the Covenant, containing the stone tablets of the Ten Commandments. All right, let's review the Ark of the Covenant. The Ark of the Covenant is a portable wooden chest. Portable, again, this means we can take it with us. Pick it up and take it with us. It's movable. It's a wooden chest covered with gold. It's about four feet by two and a half feet wide. And it contained the Ten Commandments. The Israelites considered it the most important symbol of God's continual presence with them. God set apart priests for service. The priests conducted rituals, sacrifices, and other important worship activities. One day every week on the Sabbath, that was set apart to worship God and to rest from chores and business. Moses was away on the mountain for nearly six weeks. Meanwhile, in the valley below, the people's impatience would lead them, sorry, would lead to Moses facing a bitter homecoming. When the people saw that Moses was so long and coming down from the mountain, so he was out up there for how long? All right. 40 days. Caleb, yes. no more. Sorry. Sit down and listen. Are you listening? Yes. Okay. He was up there for 40 days, so that's almost six weeks. Put that box up there, please. That's on your arm. Yeah, you're about to knock that down. Um... He was, they considered it so long. I, I'm not sure. I guess it can seem like a long time. Um, but they gathered around Aaron and said, come, make us gods who will go before us. And really they don't mean gods. They mean what? Idols. Idols, because there's only one God. As for this fellow Moses, that's kind of funny. This, this guy over here. As, as for this guy, Moses, as he calls himself who brought us up out of Egypt, we don't know what has happened to him. They do know. What has happened? He must have died. Let's make a new leader. Aaron answered them, take off the gold earrings that your wives, your sons, and your daughters are wearing and bring them to me. So all the people took off their earrings and brought them to Aaron. He took what they handed him and made it into an idol. An idol is any object or person or idea or anything that someone worships or raises above God in their life. If you seek it for rest above God, if you seek it for love above God, whatever it is, enjoyment above God, that is an idol. He said cat, uh, he made it into an idol cast in the shape of a calf, fashioning it with a tool. That means he kind of shaped it. He later lies about that. Then they said, these are your gods, Israel, who brought you up out of Egypt. Whoa. What did they just, they decide, said what? That this calf 
that I've just brought out of the fire. Now this is what's brought you out of Egypt. Not the blasphemy. Lord. That is blasphemy. Not the Lord, but these this gold that I just formed right Did here. Did Aaron say that? It says, then they said. That's a good point because I was confused. It says, then they said, these are your gods, Israel. So it doesn't, it doesn't say who exactly said that. I'd have to go back to the actual text to see because this is kind of like a summary. Um, a long summary. It's, it's, it's the story put in order. <clears throat> when Aaron saw this, he built an altar in front of the calf and announced, tomorrow there will be a festival to the Lord. So the next day, watch out your feet, please. So the next day, the people rose early and sacrificed burnt offerings. They sacrificed burnt offerings and presented fellowship offerings. Are they doing this in front of the calf? I guess they are. Afterward, they sat down to eat and drink and got up to indulge in revelry. Yes. I was noticing it said that when he, just a little detail, that when he said, when Aaron was talking to the people, he said, I could tell that they were male because he said, get the earrings from your wives and children. Oh, that is a good detail to notice. Yeah, so he was, whoever had approached him were, were men and not, <clears throat> not women and not children. <clears throat> so they were supposed to be the leaders, uh, the meaning men? the men were supposed to be leading the family to keep, make sure that they stay under the Lord's instruction and they've stepped out from under their covering of the Lord. So then the like Lord... Adam and Eve. Yes, that's right. Like they Adam and Eve. They stepped out of their clothes. They didn't step out of their clothes. Really? They stepped out of their boundary. Once they stepped out of their boundary, they realized they had no clothes. Then the Lord said to Moses, so now we've skipped. So then we, we were down the mountain with Aaron and the people. Now we're back up here on the, on the mountain with Moses and the Lord. The Lord says to Moses, go down because your people whom you brought up out of Egypt have become corrupt. So the Lord knows what's going on. They've been quick to turn away from what I commanded them and have made themselves an idol cast in the shape of a calf. They have bowed down to it and sacrificed to it and have said, These are your gods, Israel, who brought you up out of Egypt. Meaning idols, not gods. Although they're gods to the people because they're idols. Okay. I have seen these people, the Lord said to Moses, and they are a stiff-necked people. We, now, use, we say that when mom was getting my head back in the shower. Whenever I want them to be not to move their head all around when we're washing hair. I ask, tell them to be a stiff-necked Israelite so their head doesn't move. Um, now leave me alone that my anger may burn against them and that I may destroy them. Then I will make you into a great nation. So Lord is angry. Um, I feel like he's testing Moses to see what Moses will do because he's saying to Moses, I'm going to get rid of all these people and I'm going to make a great nation just out of you, Moses. But he, but he knows what Moses is going to do. It, I, it, it's a test, I think. Because he's the only God. Um, but Moses sought the favor of the Lord, his God. Lord said, Moses, why should your anger burn against your people whom you brought out of Egypt? Remember just a minute ago, the Lord said, who brought him out? The Lord said, Moses, you brought him out. And now Moses is saying, no, Lord, it was you. With great power and a mighty hand. Why should the Egyptians say it was with evil intent that you brought them out to kill them in the mountains and to wipe them off the face of the earth. Turn from your fierce anger, Lord. Relent and do not bring disaster on your people. Remember your servants Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, to whom you swore by your own self. I will make, I will make your descendant, descendants as numerous as the, as the stars in the sky. This is what he promised Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, whom he's calling Israel. And I will give your descendants all this land I promised them, and it will be their inheritance forever. Then the Lord relented and did not bring on his people the disaster he had threatened. I think this was a test for Moses' leadership. I could be wrong, but it seems like to me God is kind of saying, I'm going to test and see if his heart is for... Because uh, he was basically saying, Moses, I'm going to elevate you. It's just going to be me and you. And we're going we're gonna to destroy all these people. Um, and he's testing him to see if his heart is for himself or for the will of the Lord and, and the glory of the Lord. Because Moses says, don't do that because your glory won't be, the Egyptians won't see your glory. They'll see a, a God that took some people out into the desert and then killed them. 
And what what type what what does that say about you? That he's a bad guy. Yeah, to the, from the Egyptians. So perspective. So Moses turned and went down the mountain with the two tablets of the covenant law in his hands. They were inscribed on both sides, front and back. The dis, the tablets were the work of God. The writing was the writing in God of God engraved on the tablets. I wonder what that looked like, because it says God Himself wrote it. Um, have good handwriting. Yeah, I don't know what it looked like. Okay, so we're on page 65. We're going to stop there and see what happens when Joseph, I mean, not when Joseph, when Moses comes down the mountain. All right, bye.